Let me go into this entry. So this is TrailQuest, which is the sample project that we build in real world craft CMS. And I use it for a ton of demos of different things. But, um, so let me go down here to the feature. Uh, this is like a, so this is a rich, uh, I'm sorry. This is a matrix field called content builder. And I have different, uh, uh, different matrix blocks here. This is one for a feature and it's a nested, right? So I'm, I'm adding elements inside of this. So I add, let's say I edit this here. It says Ryan's bank balance when Apple launches new products. I want to go in and edit this. So I'm just going to change it to Andrew Welch will call you and give you advice. That's one of the features of this trail run. Okay, so you can see that this element here has updated right here behind, behind this panel. You can see now it says edited, right? Okay, I'm going to save that. And this entry has been saved, but if I scroll up here, Oh, it didn't do it. Uh oh. I thought it's supposed to give me a draft of, um, hang on. Let me just look really quick. Oh, I don't have those showing in this template yet, do I? Oh, no, I do. So it did publish it. I thought it wasn't supposed to. Oh, what did I do wrong? All right, let me edit. I see you're referencing me and your stuff here. Edit. Okay, so that's edited now. Oh, the uh, the little pop-up has edited in it too. Very cool. Okay, so now if I save that and huh, what did I do? Do I need to have a draft an other place first? Okay, so now I have a draft here. Hmm. All right. So now make your other change. Yeah. Now make your nested change. And I, I'm supposed to be able to save this, but that shouldn't go. Right. So now that should be part of this draft is the, is the thing. Right. right. That's what, it's, okay. So now it's part of the right. draft because it right. shouldn't be here. Yeah. Cause that edit, but you're right. Like I would expect it if a draft didn't exist, I would expect right. it to then create a new draft with this behavior. So maybe that's something that they're still tweaking or yeah, you should let or, Brandon know you should uh, send him a little bug report. Yeah. But anyway, but then that change. So what do I have here? The change is, um, I can save that and then it'll, it should publish that change to, uh, and, and the point is the behavior before was that it would just save it. Right. Right. So you, you could never do, you could never edit nested things as part of a draft was right. the, the thing that people were complaining about. Um, and this lets you do it. But I, I, I do agree that if you're editing something that's completely unedited and then you edit a child, I would, ex the expected behavior I would expect to see is that a draft would be created. Right. Not that it would, not that you had to have a draft already and then make the uh, uh, changes in there. Yep. But maybe there, you know, maybe he's doing that for a reason. I don't know. Okay. So if I create this entry, all right, so that's been created. Okay. So that worked a new uh, card. Now before did that, would that publish it automatically? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. So what it what was happening before was the the changes were being saved, right? Um, which people didn't want. Like they wanted to be able to be working on a draft, yep. and change related stuff and have that all be part of the the draft itself, which yep. makes sense because you don't want to be editing a draft and then in your let's say you're writing a blog about puppies and you add a section where you talk about this Dalmatian puppy and the as you know part of that you added a new related entry to that puppy that brought in the picture, like you, you don't want when you create that additional puppy, you, do, you don't want that to be published on the front end without the draft also talking about right. the thing that is in there. So it makes yeah. sense that you would want all of this stuff to be one cohesive thing. Yep. So there may be a slight bug or I might be misunderstanding the feature, but that's 
generally how it should work. And again, this has been widely discussed in Discord, likely in GitHub issues as well. So this was like a, a bit of a, uh, uh, of a sticky issue with a lot of people. So hopefully that solves it. All right, so let's look at another one, Andrew. There's now in, so this is like a location um, field here, and this is a, uh, an element. And if I click on the action menu, we now have this replace action. Mm. So you choose that, it removes what's there. So this is important because if I hit cancel here, it, it does not preserve what was there before. It actually has already removed it. And then you can replace with another one. All right, so watch, replace, that's already been removed. You can see? Mm. So, um, but so now, Essentially, I don't know about that one either, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it it adds, it basically combines remove and add into replace. Um, I don't know the, I, think, I don't know anything about the code behind it, but maybe the replace or the remove should go after a new one is selected and that action takes place. I would, uh, I would one hundred percent agree with you that people are going to bump into that too. And, yeah. you know, we, we're looking at, in fairness, we're looking at beta software. So it makes sense that some, there might be some, uh, some rough edges or not even beta. We're looking at developmental software, right? Yep. Um, sorry, my camera, uh, must've overheated or something. Um, wow. My camera setup is working and yours professional home setup is failing. This is, this well, is great. You know, maybe you should have everything stacked on a trash can. Uh, I have in the past. That's for sure. Okay, all right, let's 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 keep going. So uh, a new field was added, Andrew, and this one is called the range field. And I have it here for setting the distance of like this trail running adventure. And I have it set to increments of 25, starting at 25 as the floor. So 25, 50, 75, and then 100 as the ceiling. You can use the, uh, the number field and it'll also will increment in those jumps like that. And you might say to yourself, huh? Yeah. Range field, that's kind of cool, but why do they do why that? Why do they well, do that? Well, that hold that thought. That may be tied into something else that yep. we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about. So range field, I think that's super helpful. I mean, uh, like it didn't take me very long to find a use for it. I mean, I could punch in like the distance, but you know, and you could use a drop down for the distance, but this is, this is nice, so. Range field, new field. Rangey, it's rangey. If you, um, let me just go into the adventures uh, entry type here and we will find the range field, which is, here we go, distance. So let me just edit the uh, base field here. So again, range field, that's what it looks like. You give it a min value, a max value, the step size, the number input size and the default value. You can also give it some suffix text. Um, and then of course, uh, instructions and stuff. So that's it. Um, and then that's just gonna output uh, the number to the screen. So you just can do entry dot. And in this case, it would be distance. Uh, if what you're is an the interview. number input size? What's that? Number input size, what is that? That would be the um, the for this here. Sorry. I believe for this right here. Let me see. Oh, you know what? It, it, oh, it should be it, two or three. Is it pixels? Is it a percentage? Like what is I think it? it's uh, characters, right? Oh, if it's characters, then that field should be, should be way bigger than it is with it set to 25, right? Yeah, it's just, I think this they have it set with the CSS, but that should probably be like three or something. Um, yeah, so uh, range field, but we're, we're gonna come to range field again here in a few minutes. Um, let's look at the next one is, uh, custom options setting for check boxes and radio field buttons. Okay, I I really like this one. This is also related to something we're going to talk about. But let me go into the um, entry type again. 
four adventures. And we'll go down to amenities. So let's say you're, Andrew, you're going on this trail running adventure with Trail Quest. And you want to know, like, oh, what, like, are they going to serve meals? Like, what meals are they going to serve? Okay, lunch provided, right? We're just setting up the check boxes here. You can set up the defaults. If you um, ever invite me to go out into the woods, I'm assuming that I'm not coming back. Much <laughs> um, I think it's what's going on. You need to come on. to Austin. This is a great time of year. We'll go do a nice trail run. We got wonderful trails in the city here. Um, so yeah, so lunch provided, dinner provided, running gear, running nutrition. And then now there's this new uh, light switch option here called allow custom options. Mm. What do you think that means, Andrew? I think it allows for custom options, right? Well, that's very, very smart of you to say that. Here we go. So as I'm editing this, I might be like, oh, you know, the Oregon Sky Running, which takes place in Bend, Oregon. They also have free ski rentals on Saturday. And then you can just, on the fly, create additional options for the checkboxes or radio oh. buttons. And then I save like that it. flexibility, but I hope con uh, content developers use that sparingly because that that invites a mess, right? Yeah. <laughs> of every person being like, "Oh, I don't think I really like what's in here." You know, I'm just gonna put in whatever I want. Right, but it could be uh, if there's a scenario where they do need to add additional things. This is a really sure. nice interface for doing it. So that's yeah. uh, that's a nice that's a nice field. And again, the output is going to be the same way that you output checkboxes. Uh, it's not going to be anything different to output the, uh, the selected checkboxes. It's just going to pick up those uh, same ones. All right. Um, show label field. This was another thing that I know was hotly debated in Discord, which is in Craft 5 when we got the URL field. And I think that was, was it 5.3? I can't remember. Something like that. Um, and that it, it didn't really come with a, like the hyper field does, where it comes with a, some other supporting fields. And the thinking was, and I think we probably talked about it on the live stream, we'll just create a plain text field and, and bundle that with, uh, with the URL field. Yeah, it's a little awkward, though. Well, it seems like they have relented, because now if I go down to my uh, call to action uh, module here, so before I use this CTA text field, and this here is the URL field right here. Now you can optionally add a label and a, a new tab toggle as well to open it in a new tab. And this also may be related to something that we are going to be talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, that's soon. a good question. I don't know. I didn't specifically ask it about is. that one. Okay, it is. It All is. Right. Um, so if we go down to... Oh, that's not where I want to be. All right, let's go down here to, this is in Content Builder. Oh, a server error. That's no bueno. Huh. All right, let me see if I can get to it from here. Oh, okay. We'll look at that. Um, but the um, <laughs> the uh, the URL here. I just I'll go right to the field. Uh, so now you have this show label field toggle and show the open a new tab field toggle, mm -hmm. and now you can instead of using that extra field that you have to create and manage, um, you can just enable those. And just real quick, I can show you, it comes with a, in the twig, this is how we would do it before, right? Like the CTA URL and then the CTA text, if I wanted to be very specific about the text. Remember with that URL field, you can have Craft try to smartly give you the label text automatically based on the URL. I don't, yep. that's probably rarely like what you would ever want. Um, but, and so instead of that, you can now, if you enable the label field, then you still use, you know, the URL and then you can do from that URL, you can do get label method and that will get the label 
that you've uh, saved there. And so, and you would define it right here. And of course you can toggle open new tab on uh, or off. And I think there's a, uh, I think there's a method for that too, but I think, cause you have to, I'm not using that link builder. I'm just kind of doing it manually here. So yeah, um, again, this was, I remember the debate about, about this in uh, Discord and, um, so yeah, they relented. If you want to use that, it's all kind of bundled up. And I feel like it's a little bit of a nicer setup here. You can see this is CTA URL. This is the, the, the URL field. And now it's yep. just all kind of like tightly uh, packed together here in its own little field. A bit nicer than having to create a matrix um, block and then you know add that additional field. So another nice addition. Um, yeah, that is what I call a compound field, right? Oh, a compound field. That's a good name. Should uh, should trademark that, Andrew. Um, so another one we have is uh, show element attributes in card views. Again, another great um, setting. So if I go to my element types, my uh, entry types here for adventures, and if you scroll down, you can see there's now a new uh, list of checkboxes called card attributes. And from here, um, you're probably used to something like this with like the, the columns of the table view. Yep. And now you can choose which attributes you want to show. And I believe, yeah, I'm not quite, let me collapse this. There we go. And you also get a preview of what that would look like. Yeah, that makes it much more useful. Yeah. So really, uh, a really nice addition, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so I haven't played with it a ton, but um, you can uh, play around with that and change it up however you want. So a nice way of further um, customizing those cards. All right, we're gonna keep going through these, Andrew. Uh, markdown field layout UI element type. So let me go back here. I have one right here. If I go to the UI elements in my field layout editor, there's now a markdown here. I have one here that I'm going to look at settings. So the content field accepts and parses markdown. And you can, nice. you can uh, do whatever you want here. You can have it just kind of in line or you can have it displayed in a pane. Let me show you uh, what that looks like in line first. Um, right here where he says important stuff. So it's just kind of in the white space, just wherever I put it here, right at the top. And if I wanted to put it in a pane, um, I can edit that and say display content in pane, apply, probably need to save it. And then 